Welcome everybody. I was planning on doing a road trip this evening and doing uh, uh, the video at a, outside at a different location over at my mother's house. However, you see a thunderstorm has popped up and so it's supposed to last a little while. So I'm um, going to go ahead and do the video before I go over and visit my mother. Uh, today our verse comes from Proverbs chapter 17 and verse number 13. It says, Whoso rewardeth evil for good, evil shall not depart from his house. Uh, this verse pretty much means what it says once again. I like those verses. Uh, it says whoso, so we know that that whoso is whosoever. Uh, whoso is either you, it's me, or uh, whoever does it, of course, um, that will do this that you reward evil for good, and you know that word reward uh, there means to return. So if someone does you good, and you return evil for the good that they've done, then the Bible says this, the consequence is evil shall not depart from his house. You say, Brother Curtis, what's exactly that mean? Evil shall not depart from his house. I do, I do not know exactly what it means. I just know a couple things. I know that since the Bible says it, I know that it will come to pass. I know if this would be a good verse for what you sow is what you're going to reap. And several things that you've learned from being on a farm when you go to plant some, one thing, uh, you reap what you sow. Uh, so if I plant corn, barley, or wheat, I know that that's what I'm going to get. You reap later than you sow. So I know that, you know, you plant in the spring and you reap in the fall. So here, uh, you may not reap this right away, but eventually it will come back to you. And then third, you reap more than you sow. You know, you plant one kernel and you get a couple ears from it. So I believe that a verse like this, if you reap, if you return to someone uh, evil for the good they've done, not only it might be later, uh, not only will it be the same thing, but I believe you'll re in return, you're going to get more than what you planted uh, in this evil, what you've done. And so as we look at it, um, there are a couple of examples maybe I thought about in the Bible. One was uh, with uh, Nabal. You remember Nabal was, he was a wealthy man, had several thousand sheep, thousand goats. And this was at the time David. Uh, remember he was running from Saul and he was out in the wilderness. And uh, Nabal, uh, David and his men would go out and protect him. Uh, and the people, now this was out in Carmel. It was not where uh, Nabal lived, but another area, another town where the, his men were taken and grazing their sheep. And David, his men, was a wall to protect them while they was guarding their sheep. They didn't take anything from them, but they never, did not let anyone else take anything from them. Well, in return, Nabal was mean to them. Uh, he did not care that they protect them, did not want to give them. And the consequence was uh, he died 10 days later. After his wife told what she did, she went and did good to David, and he uh, died. And the Lord, the Bible says the Lord uh, brought, you know, caused this death upon Nabal. So he reaped for, reaped evil for what he did. David did what was good. Well, the second one I thought about was Jesus. Remember Jesus, whenever he was uh, under the trial and under Pontius, I believe that was uh, the right case, uh, Pilate. And then um, uh, they wanted uh, Jesus to be crucified. They wanted to release Barabbas and, and uh, Jesus be crucified. And this is something they said. They said this, then answer all the people and said, his blood be on us and on our children. And you know, all through the ages, Israel has been in war and there've been a lot of bloodshed and terrorist attacks for Israel. And I do believe that they could be still uh, the blood be on them for crucifying the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm not sure, but that would be a good example, I believe, of this verse. You say, well, Brother Curtis, I'm a Christian. And I already know what the Bible says in Romans chapter 12, verse 17, that it says, recompense to no man evil for evil. I mean, I already know that if someone does me evil, I'm not supposed to be evil in return. I also know the Bible says in Luke 6, 28, that it says, bless them that curse you and pray for them which despitefully use you. So Brother Curtis, I already know that if someone does evil, 
uh, I'm a believer, so I'm not going to return evil for someone did me good. Well, just hold on there. Uh, let me throw out a couple verses, and then I want to give you three reasons, three different areas that I believe believers do return evil for good and why they do it. A couple verses, 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 9 and 10, as you remember, Peter was writing to all the brethren that were scattered abroad, believers. They were scattered because of persecution. And so Peter was writing to them, and uh, he said to them in chapter 3, verse 9, he said this, he said, not rendering evil for evil. And that's what we was just talking about, but that's not the part of the verse I want to get to. It says, or railing for railing, but contrarywise blessing. Okay, we're supposed to bless people that do us evil. And I believe we're all aware of that. And it says here is knowing that ye thereunto call that ye should inherit a blessing for doing it. That's a reward we get whenever we do good for people that uh, do us wrong. But then verse 10 says this. For he that will love life and see good days. Now, don't miss that. For he that will love life and see good days. That's you and I, isn't it? We want to do that, don't we? Don't we want to see good days? Isn't that the prayer that we would have? We well, you know this is the exact opposite of the verse we're looking at, where it says, Whoso rewardeth evil for good, evil shall not depart from his house. So two different consequences. One's uh, evil shall not depart from good from his health. And the other one says uh, there that see good days. Okay, now here's what the Bible says. Speaking to believers, it says this, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips that they speak no guile. Okay, he's talking to the Christians. They're being persecuted. And he's telling them if they want to see good days, they love life and want to see good days, then make sure you don't do this. Make sure that uh, you refrain your tongue from evil and your lips uh, that they speak no guile, deception. You know what I believe? Uh, believers, one thing that they do is they use their lips. They use words to hurt other people. And you know, there's other people that do us good or they try to do good, but we'll tear them down with the words that we say. You know, our words can give life and our words can give death. And I believe that's one way Christians reward evil for good. Well, then the Bible also says this, Romans 13, 7, render therefore to all their dues, tribute to whom tribute is due, custom to whom custom is due, fear to whom fear. And then it says honor to whom honor. You know, I believe that sometimes Christians do not honor those that should be honored. Okay, they fall short of that. They've done something that was good, worthy of honor, or they're in a place of honor, yet a believer does not show forth that honor. And I believe when you do that, then you're, re you're rendering evil for good. And I'll explain uh, this in a little bit. The Bible goes on to say, and we've already studied this verse in Proverbs 3, 27, with not, withhold not good for them to whom it is due when it's in the power of thine hand to do it. Okay, Rent, uh, withhold not good for them who is due. Listen, if I withhold good for someone that it's due them, then you know what? I'm rewarding them evil for their good, aren't they? Okay? That'd be another way that we are rendering evil for good. Galatians chapter 6 verse 10 uh, says this. It says, as we there have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto those of the household of faith. Listen, when we have opportunity to do good, and we don't do good when we can do good. I believe that's another opportunity then. If we're not doing good, we're doing evil. We're doing something that's wrong if we can help someone else. Well, let me. I told you I'd give you the three reasons and how believers do it. Well, here's number one, one of the reasons. One, well, how do believers show evil for good? One is they're jealous. You know, sometimes believers are jealous of other people. And because of their jealousy they have for that person, when that person does good, they're going to render evil to them because they're jealous. It might be something they say. It might be something to do. It might be some way that they treat them. Listen, I know who I'm talking to when I say I'm talking to believers. Yes, that's what they do. And they do it because they're jealous. And there's consequences that we're going to pay. You might not pay now, but you will pay later. And then the second reason is this, because they are ungrateful. Yes, there's believers that are ungrateful. 
They might be ungrateful to others. Someone that's done kind to them. They've done good to them, but they blow them off because they're not thankful. And they don't appreciate what someone else has done for them. And I believe that's another, that's another place where someone does evil for good. And then the third one is this, is pride. I believe there's believers that have pride in their life that they do evil when someone else does good. Because they think they're too high. They are above that person. That they look down on that person. That person's not as good as me. And when there's an opportunity to come that they've done good, they don't do it because of the pride in their life. Listen, let me just close with this verse. 1 Thessalonians 5.15 says this. See that none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. Listen, we know not to render evil for evil. But have you ever thought about that you may be rendering evil for good? Well, listen, let the Holy Spirit show you in your life where you may be doing that so you don't have to face the consequences of this verse, where evil shall not depart from your house. Well, God bless you, my friend. I didn't mean to be on the downside, but it's the word of God. And this scripture is good. Sometimes it encourages, but sometimes it has to hit in the heart to help us, it rebuke us, and to show us where we need to ask the Lord to forgive us so we might be the kind of person God wants us to be. We have a great day. God bless you, my friend. We're another day closer.